Hello and welcome. Thanks for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out in the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover and check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's get into some environment variables with SvelteKit 1.0. Now, if you've used environment variables in the past, uh, frequently what you would do would be install the npm package, uh, npm install dot env, and then you would fire that up and make use of that in order to access your environment variables. Now with SvelteKit 1.0, you no longer need to use that. In fact, they recommend now that you don't because SvelteKit provides its own way. In fact, they provide four ways of making use of your environment variables and they tried to set this up so that it would make logical sense. Before we get into the four different ways, I do want to point out that inside of the svelte.config.js file, there is an area called kit, and this contains all of the configuration options for your Svelte kit application. Things that are not explicitly set are supposed to have default values. For myself, uh, when I started playing with the environment variables with Svelte kit 1.0, I ran into an issue where uh, it was not letting me import anything. It would say that there was no exported member from that file. So in order to fix that for myself, uh, I came in here into the kit portion of this config object and added an env. And that is an object with some properties and one of them is directory. And this is the directory that uh, SvelteKit should look in in order to find your environment variable. For myself, it's the base directory, but you can have this uh, set up to be whatever it is you'd like. If you're having issues with environment variables in your SvelteKit application, come in here and add the path to where your environment variable lives just to make sure that's not the problem. And you'll see here if I hover over it, it does say that the default is supposed to be dot. So I'm wondering if maybe this was an issue with Mac. I know frequently when I'm trying to run a script, I have to have dot slash in order for the script to run. That's one thing to put you up on right in the beginning before we get too far into this. If you're having issues, try this. Uh, it certainly fixed my issues. Looking at the documentation for the environment variables in SvelteKit, there is really good documentation here. And I will link to this in the description of the video. But what this lays out is essentially this. We have two static ways of importing environment variables, and we have two dynamic ways. There's both a public and private version of each. So the difference between the dynamic and static is that static is inserted into the application at build time and dynamic is sent at runtime. Now, the difference between public and private is essentially where in your application has access to those environment variables. In the case of the public versions, uh, these are able to be accessed from the back end and the front end. The client has access to these. And in the case of the private versions, uh, only the back end has access to those environment variables. So what that looks like in our application is this. I have a an environment variable here. I have a two environment variables that are private. They're in the private section. I preface mine with the word secret underscore. We don't want to accidentally expose that, which uh, SvelteKit makes that actually hard to do. And then anything listed with public underscore by default, SvelteKit will consider a public environment variable. If you wanted to change what this prefix is, you can do that as well inside of the svelte.config.js by adding another option just after directory, you just put a public prefix and then you can set it to whatever it is you'd like. Now, I generally don't set things unless I need to and public is fine for me. Uh, the private ones you choose yourself. I don't know why they didn't choose um, to have a private prefix in here, but uh, you can set your public one there if you'd like. Otherwise, for myself, I just uh, always stick to secret underscore for my private ones. 
and keep the default of public underscore for my public ones. So what this looks like in practice is this. I have a plus page.ts file and here you can see I have uh, import public underscore URI and public underscore variable VAR from a dollar sign env slash static slash public and that would make sense these are our public environment variables we know that they're public because they're prefixed with public underscore and then here you have in env uh, import env from uh, dollar sign env slash dynamic slash private now if i were to try to access env dot public you'll see that there's nothing even showing up when I try to uh, type out public underscore URI, nothing. And if I were to try to type out public underscore VAR, again, nothing. But if I were to look for my secret ones, since that is the private module where those are exposed, you'll see that both of them show up here, no problem. I've got the URI, and I also have the VAR that I have set in my uh, .env file. Now, because these are private, if I were to try to save this, let's save that and then look at, I'm not sure why the hot module reload just did not work there, but uh, if I were to save that, you'll see right away SvelteKit yells at you and says, hey, you cannot do this. The build will not build. You can't even run this in development mode because you are trying to load in a client facing uh, file a private environment variable. You cannot do that. SvelteKit won't allow you to do it. So that makes it really nice for um, preventing accidental mistakes. Let's take a look at some of these. I'm going to go ahead and console.log and I'm going to get rid of this private because we can't do that. And I'm going to say public and then the public URI and I'm just going to copy this and paste it and say public underscore VAR. And if I give that a save, you'll see here in the back end console, we have uh, John Towns and Gabagool. Those are my two uh, public environment variables, John Towns and Gabagool. And they console.log just fine out in the back end code. No problems there. Now, if I want to access the private environment variables, again, you cannot do that from a client facing file and plus page.ts and the plus page.js. Remember, they, those files run both on the client side and on the server. So this file would run first on the server and then during hydration would also run on the client. So that is why you cannot have your private environment variables exposed in this file. But if you wanted to or needed to access private environment variables, you can easily do that by simply changing this file to plus page.server. And I'm changing the file name and I'm saying this is super easy, but at the same time, let me point out that this might change the structure of your application because in the case of deploying to Vercel, for instance, uh, there's some differences between what you can do in the uh, plus page.server and the plus page. So just keep that in mind, tuck that in the back of your hat for later. Now I can import the private environment variables. So I can import uh, secret and the other secret whoops like that and let's console.log these secret and then we'll do a colon and secret and we'll just copy and paste this and grab the other one. Save that and we'll make sure to refresh since my hot reload's acting funny. And now you can see that we have 
all of them printing out just fine. We've got both of the publics, John Towns, public, Gabagool, and then uh, secret, secret URI, and secret, secret sauce. <laughs> we don't want anyone to get that special recipe. So that is uh, how we print these off. Now the other thing to uh, keep in mind is that these are the static versions. If you wanted to access the dynamic versions, you would import ENV from either dynamic, ENV, dynamic, dynamic private, or dynamic public, your choice, depending on what you need. And then you'd access that by doing env dot and then the variable that you're looking for. And I can save these and now you'll see that those still print out. The difference again uh, to keep in mind is that the dynamic versions are sent at runtime. And so if you're sending these um, to your client, that is going to increase your payload. Uh, it's gonna make your payload larger if you're having to send environment variables from your back end to your front end. I would only use the dynamic versions if absolutely necessary because of it increasing your payload size. That is environment variables in SvelteKit 1.0. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please give a thumbs up. Uh, that would really help my channel. Comment below with your thoughts and as always, have a great day.